Welcome back to War of the Ring Breakdown. So this is the charge phase. So there are four phases, four real phases and priority phase. So you've got priority, which is basically very short, move, shoot, charge, fight. Those are the four phases. Uh, the first three, move, shoot, charge, are all done um, alternating. So I move everything, you move everything, I shoot everything, you shoot everything. Uh, fight phase is done all at once, but let's get to that later. So the charge phase. Um, this is how it's done in the book. Then I'll give you the way we do it, which I think is better. So in the book, the person with priority chooses a formation. Um, then they roll their d6, and then that formation does their charge. Uh, then they choose another formation in their army, and then you just keep going until you've finished everything. That's kind of weird. We don't do it that way. What we do, and this is a house rule, I recommend it, is the person with priority says these units are going to charge and they put a dice behind the units that are going to charge. Then the other person says, oh, well, you're going to charge with them. I'm going to charge with these units and they pick a bunch of units they're going to charge with. Uh, then the person with priority rolls their charges all at once and once those dice are down, you can't pick them up again. So once you've gone, these are the units that are charging. That's it, they're locked in. If you've got two units that need to charge in together and you fail one of those rolls, the other unit's still going, they're not stopping. Um, the reason we don't really like the original one is you go, oh, let's charge with this unit. Oh, they failed. Oh, well, I'm going to not do anything else now. Uh, it doesn't have the chaos. We want the chaos of battle where it's like, okay, everybody charge, and then this unit kind of, something goes wrong, and they don't quite make it in time, and you're like, ah, oh, crap, now I'm on my own. What am I going to do now? Uh, it just adds a little bit of chaos, which is more fun. Uh, so the way in the book, so person with priority picks a formation, resolves it all, then picks another formation, resolves it all. Once they're done, the other side gets to go. The way we do it, declare your charges, other side declares their charges, person with priority resolves their charges, other person resolves their charges. And a lot of times this ends up with, uh, I'm going to charge this unit, I'm going to charge this unit. Priority unit charges first, gets in, cancels the other charge, or fails gets charged by the other unit um, which I think is more fun like it's who's got the more momentum as these two sides charge into one another anyway that's just by the by I would recommend the way we do it formations uh, formation at a time is a bit weird units that shot in the shooting phase cannot charge units that have been charged cannot charge units which are disordered cannot charged those are the three main things you need to worry about also units who moved heroic moved four things if you heroic move if you shot if you are being charged or have been charged and if you are disordered so those are the four things everyone else can charge um let's the charging is a bit convoluted so let's let's break it down uh you can always pre-measure that's standard rule so the way charging works is let's take a unit of of four we'll take a four company unit I'll put a graphic up choose one company to be the spearhead uh, this is very important so this is the spearhead company this is the only one we're worried about for the moment all of your measurements all of your lines of sight are going to be drawn from that company that company is the only one that needs to make contact ignore all the others for now take a uh, so take a uh, a situation where you've got say you've got you're on the flank of somebody and most of your unit is in the front, except for this one company who's got a nice flank charge. You may say, I want my spearhead company to be the company in the flank. Um, and we'll see why that's important later. So they, they're the ones who are really doing the main charge and everybody else is sort of following them in. Uh, it just saves. It's a bit weird, but it once you get used to it, it makes a lot of sense. And it also saves you having to be like, but I'm like one figure short of being in your flank. And there's always some argument about that. I'm remembering old fantasy days where people will always be going on getting the protractor out and like well actually you're two degrees over and it's just much easier to do it this way trust me um you can only charge things that are visible to you and you can only charge things within your line of sight um i shouldn't need to say that but 
you'd be surprised the things you have to say sometimes. Uh, monsters have a 360 degree view and a 360 degree line of sight. So a monster can run past you, throw a rock over there, and then charge straight back into you. Um, it's just, monsters are just on circular bases. It's just easier. Uh, monsters are also fun, and they're very cool. I like monsters, so I'm sort of biased towards them. Uh, and this is how you charge. So we have a unit here of Warriors of Minas Tirith versus a unit of Orcs. Um, they're all infantry. Don't worry about the move value. The move value is completely unimportant for this charge part. All that matters is the unit type. So the Minister with that infantry. So let's say they're five inches away from these orcs here. They want to charge them. Infantry charge D6 plus two inches. So if they want to make contact, they need to roll a three plus. Uh, a one is always a failure. So if you're one inch away from the enemy and you roll a one, something's happened. The men don't want to charge. They haven't heard you. The enemy does something weird. And you're like, oh, what the hell was that? You hear something behind you, you sort of freak out. You're like, oh, no, we want to be charging in with something behind us, even if it's just imaginary. Uh, so a one always fails. Uh, a six is unstoppable, which gives you extra attacks. We'll get to that later. But let's just remember in your mind, one bad, six good. One bad, six good. Uh, pretty common modern wargaming figures there. Uh, so infantry charge D6 plus two. Monsters charge D6 plus four. Cavalry charge D6 plus 6, and Flying Monsters charge D6 plus 8. It's pretty easy, 2, 4, 6, 8. So I think my, my, my grade 1 mathematics is coming back to me slowly, but I think it's 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, plus a D6. That's all you need. It's all D6 based. Uh, which means Cavalry have a potential charge range of uh, 2 or uh, 1 always fails, so uh, at least 8 inches and at maximum 12. Uh, so that would be, uh, sorry, yes, so that'd be 6 plus 2 is 8, 6 and 6 is 12. Infantry have a charge window of um, minimum 3, uh, sorry, minimum 4 inches, maximum 8 inches. So the infantry's maximum charge range is the cavalry's minimum charge range, uh, which is interesting when you sort of, you just sit your cavalry just outside infantry charge range, you know you're completely safe, and you get to dominate all of the charges going in, which is lots of fun. Um... And you can always pre-measure, but it's a random D6, so you've got to be careful. Um, so you move the spearhead D6 plus, let's say, infantry, so D6 plus 2. So that spearhead moves, say you roll a 5. That spearhead moves 7 inches, even though the move is only 6, it moves 7 for this one. Uh, they make contact. All they need to do is touch. So if you've got a weird sort of janky formation down here and you come in like that, that's it. You'll, you'll square up automatically. All you have to do is touch. Uh, once the spearhead has moved in and touched, they sort of square up and lock, and then the rest of the formation, so long as the, each company doesn't move more than double its own movement, deploys however they like around that spearhead. So you may come in in a big line and deploy fanned out like that. You may move in or fanned out and deploy in a big line, phalanx style sort of thing. Um, not sure why, but maybe you want to. You might want to mitigate the amount of attacks coming back at you, uh, and you you can do that. You may want to get a bunch of units all charging in at once on this one enemy unit. Uh, we'll see why you might want to do that later. So you might you might want to bunch up, getting a big spearhead. I'm um, thinking the Bretonian uh, lance formation. So you got a big long line going in, uh, and this is also cool because your cavalry who are coming in like this suddenly all fan out and smash in at once. It adds a bit of cinematic to it as well. So the spearhead moves, makes contact. The unit, so long as it doesn't move more than twice its movement, forms up around the spearhead. Uh, if you're charged, you don't get to react. That's it. There is no fleeing. There is no stand and shoot. There is no reform for the charge. If you're charged, you're charged. Uh, if your spearhead, for some reason, can't reach, or your spearhead... Uh, even if another unit can, like say you pick a spearhead that's sort of on the flank, but it's a bit further away and you roll one inch short. But if you had picked a spearhead in the front, you'd be able to get in. No deal. Once you pick your spearhead, you're stuck with it. And if it can't get in, it can't get in. That's just bad luck. Um, you can, the change of formation when you're charging is really cool because a lot of these sort of rank and file games get very picky with formation changes. 
And War of the Ring is just not like that. It's like, oh, I'm going to charge in and I'm going to spread out a little bit. It's like, yep, you can do that. Uh, my, ca- my infantry going to part a little bit. Cavalry going to pour through, fan out and charge. That's just cool to me. I, I enjoy that. That's cool. Uh, it means you're going to have less shooting, but your knights with their big lances are going to come down, come through the infantry and just smash. I think it just looks so cool. Uh, and it makes the game easier. It causes less fights. Honestly, it's um, not that you're going to be arguing with people, but sometimes it's like, you know what, man? If it causes, if there's a potential for less conflict, that's normally better in a war game, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, anyway, with monsters, I love monsters. I'm going to keep talking about them. Monsters can only be in contact with one base at a time. So corners count for contact. If you're touching corner to corner, you're in base contact. Uh, the only exception is monsters because they can only touch one company at a time. Uh, so if you get like nine goblins and you all charge into one cave troll, a uh, one ent, sorry, you can start. You can only fight with one company. Uh, the rest can do supporting attacks, but it's only one company actually fighting. Uh, you can multi charge. You can charge ten units into one unit if you want to. Uh, you can charge as many times as you want into that unit. Uh, you can just dogpile them with infantry, cavalry, trolls, flying eagles. You can charge anything you want into anything else. It's up to you. You can have multi-way combats. You can have pile-in charges. You can do whatever you like. Uh, and then, of course, we have the heroic charge. And all the heroic charge, I know the heroic move lets you move triple. I know the heroic shoot lets you shoot even if you do the heroic move. The heroic charge, all it does... All it does is that you charge before anything else. And sometimes that's better than anything else. That's better than any heroic move or shoot. My damn cavalry need to be charging. Because if they don't charge, they get killed. If they don't charge, they don't kill anything. If they don't charge, they're useless. So then, man, those heroic charges are some of the best heroic moves you can do. Some of the best heroic actions you can do. Um, But all they do is let you charge first. That's it. That's all they let you do. Uh, and I tell you what, they are the most suspenseful, intense moments of the game. When my cavalry are all lined up and you've got your, your Urukai with their swords and shields across from them. And I'm like, I'm charging those Urukai. And you go, well, I'm going to heroic charge to counter charge your cavalry. And I'm like, well, I've got to use my might point to do a heroic charge on you. And a friggin' four plus dice is going to determine what happens next. And before you know it, it's like, well, these three units are all going to heroic charge. So let's dice off to see which of those three gets first. I've tripled my chances to win. And you still lose. <laughs> like, it's just fun. It's just a lot of fun. We are that, like, intense. That's the tactical moment of who's got the... the someone's got the initiative, but who's got the local initiative here? Uh, is, your, is your hero better than their opponent? And sometimes an all-captain gets the better of somebody like that, and... Sometimes that all captain is just happens to be in the right spot, smacks the right person over the head, and they just all go forward. Uh, and sometimes not. So uh, you have to do the heroic charges at the start of the phase, and the hero's formation charges before everybody else. So you can't wait to see what the opponent does and be like, "Yeah, I'm going to do a heroic charge here." It's got to be done at the start. <laughs> so quick breakdown: the way the book says to do it. Pick a formation, that formation charges, resolve everything, go to the next one. The way we do it, the better way, is declare all your charges. Person without priority declares all their charges. You resolve all your charges, they resolve all their charges. You cannot charge if you heroic moved, if you shot, if you are disordered, or if you have been charged. Those are the four things that stop you charging. Infantry, D6 plus 2. Cavalry, D6 plus 6. Monsters, D6 plus 4. Flying Cavalry, D6 plus 6. Take a spearhead, move the spearhead, build the unit around them. That's your formation. Uh, You can multi-charge. You can only charge stuff you can see and that's in your line of sight. And one always fails, is is the basics of it all. Uh, Thank you very much for watching. Join me next for the fight phase. The fight phase is the really, really fun bit. That's the bit where your games are going to be decided. So please come join me for the fight phase. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.